Good day, Internet. Welcome to Stick Ninjas Devlog, episode 29. My name is Andrew Russell. And this fortnight I've been working on the network timing system for Stick Ninjas. So just to give you a little bit of a refresher on what the network timing system is for, uh, first of all, its main goal is to keep the client running at a fairly stable 60 frames per second, obviously. Uh, the other thing it needs to do is keep the client in sync with the incoming packet stream. Um, so, you know, if a packet arrives for a given frame, the client needs to be about to use that packet uh, in its display. Um, and the third thing it has to do, it has to keep basically 100 milliseconds of gap between each incoming packet and when it gets used. Uh, and this is to maintain what's known as a lag buffer, which allows for a little bit of leeway in when packets arrive. Uh, they can still be useful if they arrive after they need to be used, then they have to be rejected, uh, and you don't want to do that. Um, the other thing this is used for is a lerp buffer, which allows the client to interpolate between snapshots. Um, so, uh, because my snapshots are 50 milliseconds apart, I'd only need a 50 millisecond uh, lerp buffer, but by making it a 100 millisecond lerp buffer, I can lerp between two packets with a dropped packet in between, basically. So that's sort of the goals of the network timing system. So let's have a little look at the old network timing system before I started working on it uh, and improving it. So we're in an old version of the network simulation tool and you can see the output of the network timing system as this T correct value up in the um, status bar of the client. Uh, this basically means the timer correction factor. Uh, so a value of one is a perfect 60 frames per second whereas a value that's slightly lower than one is running a little bit slower than 60 frames per second, and obviously a value higher than one is a little bit faster than 60 frames per second. Um, and so the idea behind this is that the game slows down or speeds up to try and keep the current time in sync with the network time. Um, so you can see the incoming data used for this calculation in the timing bar. So the uh, green shaded uh, frames here are the snapshots in the snapshot buffer, and this tall blue tick mark here is the current time on the client. Um, the thin red tick mark here represents the expected time for new packets to arrive, uh, and as you can see this is 100 milliseconds ahead of the current time to account for the uh, lag buffer. And then the thick red tick mark here represents the actual arrival time of the latest snapshot, and you can see it jumps around as each snapshot arrives. Um, the red shaded area here is the same thing, it's just attached to that particular snapshot uh, that created it. So the old timing system is pretty simple. Basically whenever a new snapshot is received by a game it would look at the expected time uh, and the actual arrival time and you know if the packet arrives slightly later than expected it slows the game down a little bit and if the packet arrives a little bit earlier than expected then it speeds the game up a little bit. Um, and it would do this with a running average so as to sort of smooth out any of the network jitter. So there's lots of subtle problems with this system. Uh, the packet arrival times are calculated based on the current time, which is, is itself an output of the system, so that this is an output feeding back into the input of the system, uh, which causes it to oscillate. Um, the system completely disregards any packets that arrive out of order. It only considers uh, the newest and most up-to-date packet that comes down. Uh, which means that on a really bad connection, it's only paying attention to the most punctual of packets, uh, which means, which is basically the complete opposite of what you want on a really bad connection. You'd like to shift the um, considered time back as far as possible so you can use as much of the incoming data as possible. And if any um, packets do get dropped, <coughs> like if the, if the packet stream is not a steady stream of packets, then the amount of weight that each packet gets to influence the um, correction value because of the way I'm doing the averaging um, is essentially completely random and meaningless. Um, so there's lots of little mathematical problems with this system, but the major problem is that it can only account for you know slight time adrift and network jitter. Um, <clears throat> there's there's no handling for major shifts in uh, timing, and it will break pretty badly if that happens. Um, so I can simulate some of these failure cases over in the graphing tool. So if I make the server hang for about 100 milliseconds, um, the client, which is being shown here, goes badly out of sync and essentially spends the rest of the simulation uh, running in extrapolation mode. Um, 
and it's basically making up its own version of what's happening on the server because uh, it's ignoring the packets that are coming down from the server because it thinks that because it thinks they're arriving too late. But that's that's just the um, server glitching out for 100 milliseconds. This can also happen if, um, say, the network path changes, uh, for instance, and adds in an extra 100 milliseconds of lag. And so you can see exactly the same thing happening here. So here we have the network simulator again. And this is the current version up to date as of now. And as you can see, there's still a timer correction factor um, in the status bar hovering around one. Uh, this is still important because basically, uh, no matter what the network's doing, we still have to keep the client updating at around 60 frames per second so it feels good for the user. Um, what has changed is how this timer correction factor gets calculated. So if you look at the um, timing bar at the bottom now, you can see a bunch of red tick marks on it. Uh, these tick marks correspond to the last 12 received snapshot packets. Um, and this takes into account every single packet uh, that gets received. So instead of just considering the one latest, most up-to-date packet, it considers uh, everything, even if it's out of order and so on. Um, the positions of these tick marks represent what the current frame should be uh, according to that particular packet. Uh, so this is calculated in real time instead of being based on the um, simulation time now. So there shouldn't be any sort of problems with feedback into the system. So these expected frame times are essentially averaged out um, to give an overall target frame, which is indicated by this dark green tick mark that jumps back and forward. Um, so the timer correction value is then simply trying to adjust the speed of the simulation up and down to try and land the current time on that target time. So that fixes up all of the little problems that uh, we're in the old system, you know, it deals with out of order packets now and jittery connections a lot better than the um, old system. So that's good. But let's have a little look at how it deals with massive desynchronization uh, issues that the old system just couldn't cope with. So to better show this off, I've added a new feature to the network simulation tool, and that is I can hit a key here to uh, hold off updates for either a client or the server. So you can see that within a couple of seconds, uh, even though the server was hanging, um, all of the clients are now jumped back into the correct time uh, for the server and they're not out of sync or anything. So let me slow the simulation down so you can see exactly how this works. Uh, first of all, if I just tap the hold key, uh, then the average shifts around a little bit and regular drift correction just brings back everything back into sync uh, gradually and automatically. Um, and this is because the... Uh, current time is saying staying within this safe range, which is this uh, area represented in a sort of shaded green. So if I hold updates for a little bit longer, you'll see, first of all, that um, all the expected times for the packets uh, shift downwards as new packets come in and replace the old values. And then uh, that will move the safe range. So when the current time leaves the safe range, you'll see an orange bar graph start to appear on it. And this orange graph is basically the client waiting to see if this is just a temporary anomaly or if it has to worry. So once the orange bar fills up, that's uh, what I've called a timer panic, at which point a red graph starts to appear in the same place. And this is basically the timer unlocking the timer correction value so that it can drastically slow down or speed up uh, by skipping frames or duplicating frames or so on uh, to try and bring the current time under control. Um, so it's just basically an emergency way of drifting uh, towards the target. But if I hold the um, if I hold updates for slightly longer, you'll see that the orange bar fills up and the timer panics. But instead of drifting towards the new target, it decides that it's so far away from the target that it may as well just completely reset uh, the timing and do a full resynchronization, which is very similar to what it does. Um, when the client first connects to the server. So I can also do this on the client's update. So you'll notice that um, when I do this, all of the expected time shift all at once. And this is normal because um, as soon as the client can start updating again, it can handle all of those packets it receives. And so they all just jump to that new location. Um, and then it basically does the same thing only in the other direction, either either warp time back into the correct position, or it will do a forcible resynchronization.
So that's one entire sort of um, class of bugs that I've squashed by essentially re-implementing this timing system uh, properly. I'm yet to actually test it on a uh, actual network connection, so I'll have to do that. Um, but I'm pretty confident that it will not be a problem because the system is very robust um, and there are lots of values in there that can be tuned um, depending on what uh, comes up then. Uh, also these timing bars that I have in the simulator, these are also available now in the graphing tool and in the game client itself. So it's actually possible to watch uh, real network packets in the same way you can watch the simulated network packets. Um, so I can visualize what's going on pretty easily. So that's everything for the uh, network timing stuff. Uh, you might remember, if you follow me on Twitter, I announced that in this video I would be announcing that I have an announcement. Um, so this is the announcement of the announcement. So um, as you might know, I've been doing these devlog videos fortnightly, and this has been working a lot better for me because it gives me more stuff to talk about and it lets me do something more substantial for each devlog video. Uh, but I would still like to be able to put out some sort of content weekly and I've basically decided what that content is going to be and so I'm going to start that next week so next week I will be posting a video that's not a devlog but something else and that will be effectively like an episode zero um, which is going to itself announce what that project is going to be um, so look forward to that uh, so if you want to see that um, as soon as it gets posted, you can follow my blog at andrewrussell.net. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can follow me on Twitter at underscore Andrew Russell. And you can also uh, visit my new forums, forum.andrewrussell.net. Uh, uh, and I will make a post about it there as soon as that goes live. As usual, uh, you can visit stickninjas.com to get a notification when Stick Ninjas is available for playable pre-order. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week.